Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day six of the July Lico, or day seven, whoops, <clears throat> of the July Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's bomb. Interleaving string, medium. Okay, let's go. So given S1, S2, and S3, S3 can be formed by interleaving S1 and S2. Okay, so I mean, given... Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is a very standard problem. Maybe this week's theme is just standard problem. It's a dynamic programming, and of course, yes, you can do space optimization. I think I even have a video out, video up on a very similar problem for space optimization. So check that out on my profile, or, or you know, look up um, uh, dynamic programming progression or something like that, right? But otherwise, yeah. Uh, Otherwise, it is. I'm just going to write it out top down because I think it's easier to kind of think about it that way. The first thing I would say is, um, and I'm going to try to do it maybe in a naive way so that you could kind of see the the evolution of the process. Um, for me, for me, like if I'm doing it obviously in a competition or something like that, I would already kind of skip ahead because I know certain things are whatever, right? So okay. So the first thing to do is maybe just. Uh, check the impossible case, which is that, which is that you know if the length don't match up, then you can redo it, right? So let's check that real quick. Uh, unless I misunderstood this problem, which is possible as well, but nonetheless, because I think every character has to be used, right? So yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm also just trying to, yeah, I'm just trying to see if I misread any edge case because there's some stuff where sometimes you just have, I don't know, weird things. But in any case, yeah, so the function that I can have is maybe some interleave thing and then, oops, not interval, interleave, uh, eh, whatever, inter. Um, so then now you have S1, S2, S3, and then the idea here is, okay, if S3 is equal to MT, then we return true, because also in this case, that means that these two are whatever. And then now we just look at the first character, right? So then the first character of S3 can be from S1, or it can be from S2, so you basically brute force trying both of them. So you might have something like if um, S1 of 0 is equal to uh, S3 of 0, and of course... You have length of S1 is greater than zero. Um, then, uh, and then you do you do a check of return of, of is inter S1 starting from the first character S2 and then S3 also removing the first character, then return true. Of course, you want to do the same thing for S2 as well. Uh, yeah, and this is pretty much basically what I said in the sense that um, in the sense that is the first character of S3, the combined string, can either, you know, you take the first character from the S1 or S2. And that's basically the really brute force recursive way of doing it. Um, and then now here we try to make some optimization, right? So this is going to be exponential because every core can branch twice. So given n characters, it can really be like 2 to the n, roughly speaking, exponential, right? So then here, the first thing we want to do, or I like to do, is just, um, okay. So we look at these things. Note that all, what, are the, what are the possible inputs for S1, right? Let's say S1 is, is this. Then the first, the, the all the possible inputs are A, A, B, C, C, which is the entire string, or A, B, C, C, or B, C, C, or C, C, or C, right? Because you're always going to uh, take a, a suffix of the string. So that's basically the idea. And then here, the reduction is that, okay, since we only really look at the the suffix of the string, we can actually represent the suffix not by the entire string because it costs space to kind of allocate things on the stack and allocate space by just doing this. We can actually store, say, you know, the first character that we want to look at. In this case, this is going to be zero. This is going to be one, uh, having zero indexed, of course, dot, 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 right? And that's basically the idea if you are, you know, beginning of, um, 
if you're a beginner to dynamic programming or memorization or these kind of things, the first thing that you would do is by converting it to using the indexes. So, okay. So then now I have, let's just say I have n1 is equal to length of s1, n2 is equal to length of s2. Oops. And then n3 is length of s3, right? Uh, and then here we'll re rewrite the same thing, which is now we have i1, i2, i3, say. And then with i3 is equal to n3, then we return true because that means that we matched everything. Again, you know, that's assuming that they're the same so that if you move it one at a time. So then now with, if i1 plus one is less than n1, uh, or mm, if i1 is less than n1 itself, and uh, s1 of i1 is equal to s3 of i3, and it's inter of, I1 plus 1, S2, or whoops, I2, and I3 plus 1, then we return true. And this is functionally the same thing as this, except for now we're passing up an index. So, yeah. So this is basically the same thing again. Oops. Right, and then we do it. And then we kick it off by saying return is inter from the first index of everything. Um, and of course, this will time out, but I just want to you know, run it out real quickly. It may not time out on the input. Uh, but yeah, but it looks good. The one thing that I would also say that is for, for binary results, you have to be careful because the, the, the input cases may be weak. So it gives me confidence for sure, but not as confident in general, like or not 100% confidence, right? Just because there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Okay, so then now we say... Uh, yeah. So then now the thing is, like I said, we now look at I1 or all the possible inputs, right? Well, I1 can, oh, the two things. Well, okay. We'll go over, uh, um, we'll go over, this is actually a good problem for me to demonstrate this, but we'll go over the analysis, right? So as, the analysis that I always start off or I've been doing lately is kind of time complexity or total time maybe is a better way of doing it, saying it, is equal to time per input times number of input, right? Maybe you could do it the other way around. Um, and of course, this is a trivially true way if you do like um, unit analysis or even just considering that time per input is just really time over, input, over one input. So we have the number of input over time, then it, the, 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 the inputs cancel out uh, or something like that, right? I mean, I guess they don't really cancel out, but the unit cancels out is what I mean. So yeah, and of course, how many number of inputs do we have? Well, the number of inputs we have is equal to, let's do this the naive way first, which is that I1 can be from 0 to N1, I2 can be from 0 to N2, oops, and I3 can be from 0 to N3, right? So that means that, and here, we look at the constraints, you get 100, 100, 200, um, and then each input ticks over one time. Exact. In fact, it makes two calls, right? So it always makes two calls, so this is going to be over one time. There are technically O of N1 times N2 times N3 inputs. So total time is O of n1 times n2 times n3. We didn't, I, I messed up here in that we didn't do the memorization yet. So, um, but I wanted to say, eh, I did it a little bit out of order, but, but yeah, so that's the total time if we do the memorization. And what is memorization, right? Memorization, basically, you, uh, you can think about memorization as every time we get the same input, we give the same output. So, so if that's the case, then why not store it so next time we don't have to recalculate? So that's basically the idea about memorization in general. It doesn't have to be dynamic programmingly related, but we're going to use it for dynamic programming. Um, but yeah. So one thing that I, uh, I, I keep on jumping around, so that's my fault. But, but keep in mind that this total time is actually wrong. Why is it wrong? I'm going to, explain, I'm going to do the coding uh, for the space. I'm going to do the coding for the memorization and think about why this is wrong and let me know uh, <laughs> in the comments below and then I'll explain it afterwards. But yeah, but here the thing that I would do is, 
Oh, uh, I guess now is where I'm going to do it because I don't want to do n n cube space. But but why why is this wrong? I mean, this is technically it is all of n cube or n one times n two times n three, but it's not a tight bound. The tighter bound is actually just o of n one times n two, right? And why is that? Because n3 is uniquely determined by n1 times n2, right? Of, uh, right? Um, in fact, n3 is exactly n1 plus n2. Um, so n, n3 has, is not a degree of freedom because you, you cannot choose n3. n3 it is just determined by n1 and n2. So therefore, total time is actually of n1 times n2. Right? Does that kind of make sense? Because you, N3 doesn't really have freedom. It doesn't have bound around. So even though technically you could look at this here, but technically this is just not an input, right? You could get, you can, you can in fact write this in a different way. And I guess I should maybe. Um, you could write I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. Right? And then here we can even remove these. And this would be the same code. So yeah, so that's what I mean by uniquely determined, and that's why this is n square. And and it's I just want to say that even though I made it look clear that it is n square, it is also okay if you have this. If you if you had this in your code, it is still n square. Of course, it's a little bit more space per per thing, but it is still going to be n square. Um, yeah, because you just have a constant extra space requirement for each one. So yeah. So now let's just do uh, the, yeah. And now this is standard caching stuff that uh, hopefully you would already be familiar with. But but yeah, this is the way that I like to cache it. I like to cache it, cache it. I, um, and technically, actually, I messed this up. I think I want this to be plus one. Um, so that the input, because the input can be n one exactly, so we want it from going to zero to n n one, which you know requires the plus one, and then here we just go if has cache of i one i two return cache of i one i two. Um, yeah, and then we set has cache of i i one i two to go true. And then this is kind of annoying the way that I did it, but nonetheless, eh, I guess I could just write something like this, right? This is actually technically less uh, efficient because of early termination, but I think this is okay. Oops. Why is this shorter? Oh, I have an if statement, that's why. Cool. Uh, actually, I lied. It should be cache i1, i2 is equal to, to force to start with. Okay. So hopefully this is good and I don't have any typos, but that's basically the idea. Um, hmm. I have an extra paren. I do have an extra paren. Hmm. Oh, whoops. I removed the extra parameter. But yeah. Cool. Let's give it a quick submit. Hopefully it is good and no typos. Uh, cool. Yeah. So. Hmm. My thing didn't pop up. Did I do this the wrong day? Did I do the right problem? I guess I did the right problem, right? Hmm. That's weird. Let me refresh it real quick. Just to make sure. Hmm, I guess it didn't pop up, but I did get a, I did get a notification about it, so, and the day streak went up. Eight hundred twenty-eight days, yay! In case you're wondering, uh, but yeah. So I really told with the time and the complexity. So that's pretty much all I have. So you, the the follow-up is: Can you reduce this with all of s, 
the length of N2 or whatever. Um, for that, I will look up my, uh, and I'll have it in the, in the comments below, a link to my DP space progression problem. Um, the, the idea is converting this to bottoms up and then do the space optimization. But I just wanted to kind of go over this part of it, especially the part about um, or degree of freedom that makes it a little bit cheaper. Um, I think that's kind of something that sometimes people just YOLO but don't analyze, but this would be how you analyze it. Um, cool. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for today. Let, let me see what I have last time. I did not do it bottoms up last time, so hmm. how did I do it this time? I don't know if I have a video here, but I also did it with top down, so maybe next time I'll do it bottoms up if I have a chance. But okay, that's pretty much all I have for today. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.